Hello friends, uh, Jeffy here with another chapter of our Mosquito build. If you missed the previous chapters, you can still click on the links. If you didn't have the opportunity to pick one up, we still have it for sale, so go to our website at scorland.com. Last week we tackled the build of the wing. As you can see, uh, this time, uh, this chapter, we are going to sand the edges, we're going to trim it, and also we're going to install the control, the control surfaces and the wing tips. So uh, let's get at it. First thing, let's take the tape off and see what we got here so we can sand the edges. After checking the ridges, especially the edges in the upper and the bottom wing, if by any chance there is a little bit of, like when you have a gap or anything, I always put some super glue on it, like a bead of super glue. It works as a filler and as a putty. But in this case, I think the plastic cement or the plastic weld did its job and the tape held it together so I don't see any, any gaps. So there, all these edges here are ready to be sanded, for which I use a medium, a number two, just for the initial glue off. And then we'll go over it with a finer stick that, for now, this will do the trick. I wouldn't go with a coarse stick because it might be too harsh on it. The medium one is the way to go. Spill a little glue here. No big deal. Just run a, it was running along around the tape on the edges of the tape, so I have a little bit of a, a race line. Just shows that you're not careful with glue or especially with extra thin super glue or plastic well. If you're if you apply it, you have to be extra careful that it doesn't run in the wrong direction like it did here along the tape. So it got a little buildup at the edge of the on the edge of the tape, so I had to sand that. But once it's painted, it's not gonna be visible. Just left a little bit of an imprint, but it's nothing. Like I mentioned before, the first initial <coughs> sanding you do with a number two, with a medium, and then you can eliminate most of the scratches and make it very smooth with a fine sanding stick. In this case, it's a tri-grid. And then, of course, the uh, the multi-purpose pad. Get a nice smooth edge here. Okay, let's do the other side. It won't hurt just to be on the safe side. If you put like a little bead of super glue on there, still might do that eventually, but for now it looks good. It's just to just to be absolutely sure that you have no, absolutely no a seam line or anything that it's absolutely smooth. Although the, the plastic welt or plastic cement will do the trick, sometimes when you're not careful, you still have a hairline of a seam in there. So if you want to eliminate that risk or that problem, you just add a little bead on the joint, let it dry and then sand it and then that will absolutely be gone. This is good enough for now. I think we like a nice smooth surface here all the seams are gone the joints are said to be all blended in if you follow the instruction sheet to me I suggest that you add these formation lights or landing lights or clearance lights in place and then mask them off but I would rather suggest to do it at the end after the painting I did some test fitting and they really fit in there perfectly so I don't think there is a problem and just to just to uh, avoid some problems, further problem, or maybe some complications. I would wait until the airplane is finally done, you're done with the weathering, uh, done with the with the painting especially, and then glue them in place. But that's, that's up to you. They do provide masking roundels to stick over it. I'm just gonna wait. So now, according to the instruction sheet, we'll uh, start working on, on the uh, control surfaces, so. I'm going to cut these from their carriers and then glue them in place and of course the wingtips. So let's do that. As you can tell on the instruction sheets a lot of a lot of the, the pieces look, to, look the same like left and right. They look pretty similar and to keep track my suggestion is that you leave them on the sprue until you need them until you reach that number. It's better in this case especially when you work with a bigger airplane with a lot of complicated pieces and you have like mirror image pieces left and right that it is possible that sometimes you're 
you want to get ahead of the game and then you cut all these pieces off and even if you lay them out sometimes it becomes confusing you don't know what what the left or the right is so if by accident or even if you cut them off prematurely just to get ahead of the game just to prepare everything it might be a, a smart idea to mark them write the number actually on the inside so if by any chance you got distracted you don't know what's right or what's left you can always go back and look at the number you can still clean all, everything up before gluing but if you have to put them away for a, a long period of time or something or, or even for a short period of time when you come back you might be confused it's always nice to with a pencil or something write it on the inside what piece it is and then you, you, you'll, you don't have uh, that problem anymore but I would su suggest to leave them on the sprue until it's time to cut it off and then it directly glue it on the airplane. Let's glue these together. Uh, as I did with the wing, it's always nice to have some masking tape close by. In this case, it's the five millimeter Tamiya tape, but any masking tape, any painter's tape will do that you have a little uh, couple pieces close by. So whenever you have to close something, you can immediately secure it with some tape. Just to be extra safe, gently brush the joints on the back and then on the front. Again, be very careful, don't overdo it. You can always come back and add a little bit of super glue on there once you're done. But just for now, for the initial joining of the, the two halves, just attach a little bit of plastic welt on both sides of the edges. And then secure it with some tape. And there you go. Number one, now we'll do the, the other side. The tape, even in, in Tamiya's case, it's, it's almost not necessary. It's just being preventive, but the fit is so tight around the edges that it's not, not really necessary, but it won't harm either. The main purpose of this pad is to get all the flash off because either when you sand it even with a medium or a fine there's still little fibers hanging out there so this will take it completely off and by itself it makes it small uh, smooth and also the paint even will attach better but it's mainly to eliminate all the fibers that or leftovers or a little flash here and there this multi pad will do the trick And again, to be safe, just go around the edges. Okay, now let's uh, go for the wingtip. Tamiya, according to the, their instruction sheet, they suggest that you mount the formation lights on there, or the, the wingtip lights, as you can call it. But I would suggest just like the under the um, the lights underneath the wing, I suggest to add those whenever, basically at the last stage before finishing the plane, like after painting it, just not to compromise any uh, because you only got one pair. Once you ruin the clear parts, that, that's a that's a big problem you have right there. Let's do the other side. Now we're going to look at these parts here on the instructions. It's part of the interior of the wing where all the spars are located and the spar detail. So because these will, will be visible eventually, so we have to mount these on both sides of the wing.
Okay, we get that in place. Now it's just a matter of attaching the fuel tanks. As I mentioned in my previous chapters, I'm not going to leave any panels open. I like an, air, an airplane or a model with everything closed up. The fuel tanks are just part of the, the interior, I guess, but just to be sure, because I'm, at this stage, I'm not 100% sure what's going to be visible through the cockpit, through the cockpit glass, because as you can see on the wing here, this is also part of the cockpit. Before I close everything up, I need to make sure I paint this. I don't like to do that, but that's just the way it is. I overlooked that while I was installing the cockpit and painting the cockpit. I forgot that this was part of the things that are visible. I'm not sure about the fuel tanks. I think they're not visible, but I'm just gonna install them anyway. It's no big deal. It's only a few parts. And just to get peace of mind, I'm gonna attach them to the wing. Also, and I don't know if you noticed, but I repositioned these brackets here. Now these brackets of the intakes, let's, let's call it the intakes or coolers or air ducts or whatever, they're very flimsy because they're made out of very thin photo etch and when handling the wing sometimes you don't pay attention and you compromise them. Sometimes you touch them with uh, your pinky or other parts of your hands or you bump into it and they go back and forth. Now photo etch, uh, you can only do so much to it before it snaps. Now, if these snap, that is a problem because then you have to go back to the super glow and try to reposition them and you're never going to get a clean attachment as you have right now. So just as a precaution, be careful once you manhandle the, the wing here that you don't compromise these brackets because again, once they break off, you're going to be in a lot of hurt to restore that. So let's work on the fuel tanks. Well, it seems that if I look at complete construction of the fuel tanks, I don't think they're going to be visible from the cockpit anyway. It's no big deal. Only shows how thorough that Tamiya is in engineering this kit. It's absolutely fantastic. Even this wing is a part on it, can stand on its own. I mean, it's just so well engineered. Let's see if we can sand the wing tips already. Might be a little too quick, but I'll glue them in place. Plastic weld has two characteristics. One good, one not so good. The first one is that it dries very fast. So whenever you apply it in a joint and you, you use the proper amount, you can start sanding it within the hour. The other thing is that whenever you have to, and especially in a big surface as the wing here, when you have to apply it, you have to do the rest of the wing. This is already dried up. So you have to learn how to work with it, but I prefer plastic weld over plastic cement because it dries pretty quick. Once you get it in there and you close the fuselage and you put like a little bead around the edges, you let it sit there for an hour and basically you're, it's ready to sand. You have to be patient with it, but once you know how to use plastic weld, that's really a big help. It eliminates a lot of drying time. Sometimes you have to put your project away for like a day or half a day. With this, safe to say that you can sand between an hour and two hours. You can already start sanding. Like in this case, the wing tips, I, I applied a small amount in between. Of course, this is not a big piece. It's just a matter of pressing those two halves together and applying a little bit of plastic weld in between. But this is about 20 minutes, 30 minutes now, and it's ready to sand. I can easily go with a fine sanding stick over it and just make the edges smooth. There's no gumming up of the plastic. Let's do the same with the control surfaces.
Sometimes I like to scrape, I call it, scrape the seam line. What it does is when you use like a new scalpel or a new X-Acto blade, you can easily, literally scrape the seam, the seam line. And what it does, it makes a fine, or it trims actually the excess glue or excess plastic or flash that you have. Also, it shortens sanding time. You don't have to sand as much. Now you have to be really careful that you don't overdo it or you might have too much material scraped away. But if you do it gently and only literally scratch the surface, then the sanding will be reduced to a minimum. You can do maybe a little bit more, put more efficiency in it. It reduces sanding tremendously if you do it right. The plastic welt, this is glued about 45 minutes, an hour, and it's, it's as good as ready to be sanded. So let's do the other, the other one. Again, we'll scrape a little bit. I don't know if you can see it here, but there is a little bit of a, an offset between the plastic that can easily be trimmed down with just very gently scraping around the edges. The combination between cleaning it up, cleaning the excess off, and reducing sanding, basically. Scraping, if you be really careful, is more efficient than sanding. The sanding you need to do anyway to, to make it round again and to smooth everything out. But with scraping, you, you can effectively reduce or trim it a lot more efficiently than with a sanding, a sanding stick. But the sanding stick is needed to blend everything together and smooth everything out. Once again, it's ready to be mounted. Again, a perfect fit. I'm not gonna glue them in place at this moment. It might interfere with the rest of the build, but I also wanna keep them for painting purposes. I wanna get inside the wing. I don't even think that you have to glue them in place. They will hold just like they are because everything fits well together. So there's not even a necessity put, to put glue on there. So I just wanna Hold off a little and see with the rest of the build if they interfere or not. I can get this on here. All right. And there you have it. Another piece of the puzzle mounted the wing is, except for the nacelles, which we will address in uh, the next chapter. Uh, next chapter, I'm going to tackle the landing gear because those are part of the nacelles too. So before I can mount those, I, we need to deal with the landing gear. But for now, I think the whole wing is complete. We'll leave it at that. Take a break here. So that was it for now, guys. Uh, as you can see, we got the whole wing contraption together. Uh, it starts to look like an airplane uh, with a fuselage. It's just a matter of time uh, that we can put this baby together. Uh, next time, we'll tackle the uh, landing gear and the nacelles. But for now, let's leave it at that. Uh, take a break and I'll see you next time. Jeff Fee here, signing off. See you later. What am I doing? <laughs>